Now then, guys, uh, I'll make I'll make a video now, right? Um, to show you the rig, how I make it, the, the pulley uno rig, the one I catch on my fish on, right? The the big fish. Uh, you can use it anywhere, really. Like it, it just doesn't matter where. I've used them before. It's a good, good rig for the raises, right? The pulley uno system, right? Not the fixed. Uno system. This is the pulley. There's different versions to the pulleys, just like there's different versions to the pulley systems. There's all, it's, you know, it's, it's it's a sequence of systems. <laughs> if you get me like that, right? Anyway, right. that makes sense. Uh, like you got, you, you've got your, your, your normal pulley, um, obviously, uh, like this. That's your normal pulley. Which I found this right. I found this on, on the um good touch on this now right here. Um you buy these rigs, right? Um that's a, that's set up as a pulley. Can you see the problem with that? I found this. Someone's bought this from the shop. Right? See the problem with it? Yeah, that's right. That stop bead there. That takes away right the the pulley you, you know we've got a decent fish now like yeah but you don't need that you don't need them in it it's supposed to be free flowing up all the way down up, up and down like yeah that makes no difference whatsoever to the rig that's just a waste of money that is putting that on the waste of time better applications for your stop knots and the pulley rig is not one of them right that's going to strip anyway right yeah. uh, like this is what I use like my seventy pound S A Ultra Flex, right? It's that simple. This thing. What you need is I've got a Gemini bait club there, and I've got one of these cheap old things that you can buy in packs, like a. Uh, you get them in the tackle shops, the little gem packs that you can find. Another one, right? So you've got uh, two of them, right? And a swivel, like a 60, 70, 80 class swivel, right? That's what you want, right? And you put your, it's dead simple. Put your swivel on first. £70 that now right here, that has to be £70 right like for the um if you're using like six ounce and big baits, do you remember? £10 to every ounce. And I always use blood knots as well. Never ever fail me blood knots. When you get used to making them, dead simple and you can undo them like that. If you ever need to, if you've got, if you're using a blood knot for like on the end of your leader to tie on, like on a spinner setup or whatever, a spinner setup or whatever, like you can undo a blood knot by running your nail along it, like it comes undone. But a fish will never ever undo it. That's six times over and back through looper. Right, that's so on well, mate. And you're getting you two beads. I like using the black micro beads. I'm not sure if to make a difference because it, where I fish, the, the water's murky as hell, anyway. Like right. So you put your bead on. And you grab your other Gemini bead clip. Right. That's for your weight. That's your weight clip, that, yeah. That's your weight clip. So you can use. Anything you want on there, right? You can use like a pulley bead upside down um, with uh, things attached to the uh, I'll just have a cup on no, my cat look. I don't recommend these beads to do this either, right? But you can do that with them. But I find it doesn't really matter. You could just run them like that because you're using 70 pound high abrasive stuff anyway. I guess so, you know that, that's not a problem. That 
that's just for you running up and down your line. But if you feel that you, you want to put, like you can use a Gemini one and blue ones on there, like I've done that in the past. Put another bead on. You can see the hole. And you get your other clip, your other big clip on under that. This is a shorter one, if you notice, right? That's a shorter one than that. See the difference there? Just see the difference, like it's just a little bit shorter. This one, right? That's for your, that, that's just for the. The line that is right the, the, the up and over part. So again, six, five, yeah, five will do on the blood knot here, but I don't know if it's just with two you know about it, just the blood knot's the blood knot in it. Just tied, just tied. And all the time, just cinch it down, pull the other end. You can't use pliers as well to do that with, but. So we need. Right, that's your rig body now, right? Now, the next bit, right, is putting on the snood length, right? And then measuring that snood length, I'm not sure you have, right? I mean, I could use. I've got more 70 there, but I could use 50. Um, But right. I'll use a 50 for this one, right? It's less transparent. No, it's more transparent than me. Less, it's more. It's less diameter. Find the end on it. it is. Tying this end onto your swivel here. And you can again you can adjust these like you can with the prop with, with the standard pulleys uh, um you can make it shorter or longer and it, 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 these are good you know brilliant for the platy rigs as well right doing this and right, now you've got to measure it okay so what you do is from the swivel now right, you want your swivel to be down by your weight okay Right, you want your swivel to be down near that side, right? So you do get your line like that over your top, but over your up and over, right? Even though the swivel's there, it doesn't matter that for a minute, right? And keeping hold of your line like that, right? You bring your other, grab the clip like that, right? Okay, and hold on to the weight, hold on to the weight clip like that with your fingers, right? And then you you can let go of it and uh, hold on to that clip and you hold on to that clip. This is how you can measure the distance, how long you want the snood of the line. Because you can, you can adjust the length on these, right? <clears throat> you, want your, you want that end to be down that end, okay? So you just basically, and you're holding that line in this hand as well, right? See? So the, the line's free to move through this hand, but you've got tension on it, right? And then you okay. That's why you want it for the aerodynamics on the cast, right? Because the weight will deflect the air away from the swivel, right? And that's that's the length you want it.
and then you cut your line you, you cut the line for the hooks just above where the swivel is so you want that there oh, oh I dropped the ball you want that there and I'll show you now the amount of line you can have on your snoods on this right That's what you that's your, that's your hook end. There it is, coming onto your rig body now. You see, you just go. And down to your, down to your hooks. <clears throat> One thing to note with this rig as well, right? When it comes to, um, when you when when you're on the marks, um, keep your rod up, okay, on the rod rest with you, with the rig hanging. Right, that's the best way to rig it up. If it's on the ground and all slack, it it's, it can be a nightmare. Right, if you don't know what you're doing, right. The best way to do it, right, is to hang the rig, you rig it straight up and over, straight onto the bait clip, no messing about. That's how I do my uh, pulley. You know, that's caught me multiple double figure fish in that river. And I'll be honest with you now, right. Here, I'm just showing you how much length you can use on this. I don't even use that much. I only usually use about, what, that much because that was flowing the river see so I use half that length you know what I mean, that's all I need if you're fishing for hounds and rays and stuff like that right the longer the better if you're fishing on the beaches and stuff right and you can, like I said, like you can, I can shorten the length of that the, the rig body um, to uh, accommodate the short, which makes the, rig, which makes the rig shorter when you want to cast, so you can use more leader and get a further cast. See, you know, shorter rigs and longer snoods, casting distance like a uh, ideal. This rig is a so. And then you're not <coughs> when it comes to using your, uh, the weights. You don't have to, uh, the reason I put a clip on the bottom there now, right? It's in case I have to use a bullet because sometimes they I don't need I don't use them. I don't need them in the river there when the tides are low. I don't need it like so. I just put bullets on and then I clip onto that instead of going straight onto the splash down on this. To hang it's the best way to, to rig it up. Yeah. So if you if, if you've got a big bait on, you're better off hanging it to clip it up. Yeah. And you want a shorter clip. You do, the reason that's there, like, is because there's only the line that's going over it. So you don't want that. The shorter that is, the better, really. Like, yeah. um, and then you need the heavier weight. Like, if you're using bigger um, bigger baits as well to, to clip to, or use the or use um, the splash on solos. You can put a splash on solo on I've done, I've done that in the past. And then it's rigged up like that, ready to cast it. So there you go boys, that's, I mean that'll be a big chunky bait there now, like you're waiting to go out and just flap around in the tide anyway, it wants to go with yeah. Do 360 and twist your rig up this on the beach. Yeah. Right. That's how I do that. Like I said, I've had multiple double figure fish with this rig.
the governor's one already made up and uh, I'm using there now. One of the things I find that if you're fishing, fishing dirty water like I do, like the um, the ash cooker with the all the mud and that in the water, like it's good to say like a couple of times a week if you're using your rig like that often, like uh, um, change your rig because the mud the stuff does get on the line and that uh, reduces its transparency. You know what I mean? Builds up, you see it more. Fish see it more, and bass in and out, spooking away from line. Even cotton because they'll shy away if they don't like the look or something. <clears throat> so I do it every, do it often and swap my rig, uh, make my own rigs. Uh. This that's my big fish rig for where I fish. And uh, you've seen the fluoro rigs I make, yeah. Look, 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 Tied in, just locked in, just locked in ledger like a that loader and handsome or whatever, whatever bait you're using. I'm flapping around them inside. Like I said, shorter. I think the way, the stronger the tide, the, um, ideally the, the longer you want it. No, no, it's got that wrong. The, the, the short you want it, the stronger the tide. Because it flaps around a lot more when there's more, when there's more flow in the water. And I fish, where I, obviously where I fish, like, you've got millions of gallons pouring in from Bristol Channel there, right? Straight up the river. Millions of tons, I like, think. It's just a huge flow all the time to find. But on a big tide, short of snoods, catch fish. Like something like that, and then on the bigger tides, doesn't really matter. Uh, on, the, on the smaller tides, you want you want your bait moving about as much as possible, like this. So you give it a bit more line. You know what I mean? Right. That's how I found it. Find that you know, the congo is not in the river there. Okay. Anyway, right. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Uh, I think in my next video, right, I'm gonna, I've got plans tomorrow. Right, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go tomorrow and uh, I'm gonna fish. I'm gonna do a casting video and uh, give you a couple of tips on how to cast. Maybe like a um, that you might pick up. It's not a how to actually cast. It's how I cast, right, and how I am so comfortable with all you know, getting the power in and everything like that. It's um, all load the rod up and everything there. I'll try and do a video of that tomorrow. Um, we're, um, yeah, well, I've got things on tomorrow as well, right? But I'm planning on going fishing in the afternoon. Well, all well. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.